Whether you're a brand new streamer looking for alerts or a seasoned streamer looking to switch up their alerts from their current service, in today's video, I wanna take a creative approach. We're gonna be using OBS Studio Streamer Bot to basically trigger our own alerts. The big advantage here is to have pure creative freedom and also creating assets for your stream without using any fancy software. That being said though, there's an easier way to get professionally made alerts and that is by using today's sponsor. And today's sponsor is Own Pro. You may know about Own because of the ads mostly and you know that they have the biggest overlay library library on the internet. But Own Pro is their service that aims to give you everything that you need as a streamer, including access to those overlays. So basically how it works is that it is an OBS plugin that you control from the website. All you have to do is log in with your Twitch account, install the plugin and configure it here. If I want to configure alerts, for example, I can click configure here, then I can check out their alerts library. You might know that they have exclusive license overlays from the Call of Duty franchise, but we're interested in the free stuff. Let's click on this, for example, and this is an example of the alert that we can get. And once you have the plugin installed, you just have to click install and boom, your alerts will look like this. And installing overlays is just as easy. Just click overlays, pick the one you want, tis the season and just click install and they'll be ready to use in your OBS studio. Own Pro offers way more stuff, but I'll let you check it out by going to own.gg slash pro. That is own3d.gg slash pro. Okay, so here we are in OBS studio and we have to answer the question, what is an alert? <laughs> an alert is basically a visual and or audio pop-up that usually just alerts the streamer that someone had supported in some way. Maybe it's a follow alert, it's a raid alert, it's a tip alert, sub alert, etc. Visually, what does it look like? It can technically look like whatever you want. We can say that the most important asset is the text. When someone follows you, you want some text that say, hey, this person, the name of the user, just followed or some witty, just joined the clan or whatever. <laughs> it's also a good visual cue for the chat to understand what is happening. Now it depends on the streamer, but if they already have like a visual branding, meaning a color scheme plus a graphic style, usually they would want that to be shown in the alert. And if they don't, they could play just a random GIF playing and then the text is gonna be underneath it. All right, let's create a new scene. Call it alert scene. And the easiest and cheesiest way to get some alerts going is to use like Twitch panels. I'm gonna add a new source and it's gonna be an image source. I'm gonna call it panel and I'm gonna go find some panels. You can get some uh, for free over at gumroad.com slash get level. I made them myself. Ooh, epic panel. This one didn't have a lot of success for some reason, but I can go PNG here. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. So I have those panels and those are supposed to be, yeah, your regular Twitch panels. So I'm gonna use the blank one. Uh, I don't think that one's free by the way. <laughs> and I'm gonna scale it down. And the most important thing here is to have the text be properly formatted. So I'm gonna click plus to add a new text. We're gonna go text GDI call it alert text, click OK. And for now, we're going to type a fake username. And the reason why we want to properly format it is because if someone has a long, long, long name, you still want the text to show. So let's click select font and let's find a font that is more appropriate. And let's uh, manually scale this. And we can already tell that if we want it to be visible, it's just just follower just followed. We would want two lines. So the name on the top and then just followed on the bottom like that. So now we need to make sure that it's centered so that if the name is longer, it doesn't go away like that. So I'm going to scroll down on alignment. We're going to go center. Then we're going to center it physically. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to put the custom text here. You could put the, te the custom text if you want to, but I feel like it will look cleaner without it. So just the name. All right. So let me delete this. Cool. And then we're going to do something to make it scale automatically, depending on the, the name of the person. Because right now, if I type this, you can see it goes out of bounds. We don't want that. Let's click OK. And then with the text selected, we're going to press Control E or just right click, edit, transform, transform, edit, transform. We're going to go to bounding box type and let's go maximum size only. Let's make sure you recenter this nice. And then you want the bounding box size to be where the bounds are. <laughs> so let's play around with it. OK, so now it's 720 by 200. And when I type something bigger, for example, if there's a bigger name, what is it going to do? It's going to scale down to accommodate the name. So if someone has this name on Twitch and follows you, oh my God. that's what's going to happen. To then differentiate the alerts, we can just put an icon on top here. For example, follow could be a heart. That is also going to be an image. Of course, you're going to go on Google, find a heart with transparent background and then put it in. I got one right here. Then from there, if you want to animate this, you can use the shader filter plugin. You can use the move transition plugin. You can use OBS default source transitions. For example, let's say that I want to animate the panel in. I would right click, go to show transition, and then let's go with something fancy. Let's go with Luma wipe. 
And then we're gonna pick Fractal. If we preview it, we're gonna see that it looks like this. Not bad. But now if I turn this off and I turn it on, this is how it's gonna appear. So we can do something similar for all of those. Now if I group them all, hold shift to select them all, right click, group selected items, and I can call this follow alert basically. What happens if I turn it off and turn it back on? There you go. So that's the simplest demonstration. You tell streamer about that. Hey, when someone follows me, turn this on, wait, and turn it off. And we will do that uh, shortly. I want to immediately talk about stuff like resubs, tips, basically any alert that will have a message with it. So what you will do in that case is create another text GDI here, alert message, right? Like a mockup message. So none of them will appear if there's no message because in streamer bot, you can basically change the text, right? So again, maybe we want that to be centered. We're going to scroll down alignment center, just like that. We're not going to change the font here, but you could, you can even put a gradient. You can make this look as good as you want. And we're going to do the same thing. So the message is going to be here. We're going to click OK. We're going to press Control E and we're going to put the bounding box. I'm going to put maximum size only because it's just so easier. Uh, and we're going to change those values for sure. And in this case, where it says alignment in bounding box, you could put it uh, top center. So if the message is longer, it'll it'll just continue, but it will never go outside of the box. Right. Click close and you're pretty much ready. If you have graphics to put behind the text, we can also throw that in. So the only difference between a follow alert and let's say like a resub alert would be, of course, the, the image. If you decide to go with a different image and then telling Streamerbot to change the text on this also. Now, before we get into Streamerbot, I want you to know that, yes, I use like an asset that I already had that was already created that you have access to. Gumroad.com slash get level. Just use the panels in the free overlays and then you're good. But if you want to create them from scratch, Lord knows I have a bunch of tutorials on how to make panels. So it's the same thing. And if you don't want to use a graphic design software, I also made a video on how to do graphic design straight into OBS. So you can make motion design, you can make graphic design, you can do all of that straight into OBS. To keep it clean, I would probably duplicate this group paste this one press f2 to rename like a resub alert right because you can put text in there and i would put the alert message in there cool so when i create my actions in streamerbot i can just tell it play a follow alert when that happens play a resub alert when that happens let me put a transition for the alert message for transition can we put slide what does that look like <laughs> that doesn't look good but let's keep it <laughs> All right, here we have Streamerbot. And uh, thanks to people on Twitter, I recently learned that you can actually turn off a bunch of those settings and you can also move things around by clicking and dragging. I guess the about is not one of them, but you can move those tabs around. I know that Streamerbot is kind of intimidating, but I don't use most of those. So hiding them would be good, but I also make tutorials and I know that people are gonna say, oh, my Streamerbot looks nothing like yours. So like, I'm kind of torn if I should do that for myself. I don't use settings. I don't use server clients. I don't really use hotkeys. I don't use voice control. I definitely don't use MIDI. I don't use integrations, uh, stream apps. I don't use that anymore because I already have my OBS connected. I don't use commands. I don't use action cues. I don't even use viewers. So technically this is Streamerbot. This is all we're gonna use today. <laughs> Wait, no, actually we're not gonna use channel points. So we don't even need platforms right now. That <laughs> that's wild. <laughs> So if you have Streamerbot installed that it's connected to OBS and you're logged in with Twitch, you just, we, we need one tab for this whole thing. Anyways, under actions, we're going to create a new action and this one's going to be a uh, follow alert, basically follow alert. I'm not going to put it in a group. You should put it in a group called alerts, but I'm not going to. So our goal here is to basically turn on one of those. Let's turn it off with our action selected. We're going to right click under sub action. We're going to go to OBS. We're going to find sources because this is under sources and we're going to go to set source visibility state. This scene is alert scene. Yes, it is. The source is follow alert. Yes, it is. Click OK. So this turns it on. Now it's your alert. You can decide how long you want it to stay on. Let's say five seconds. We're going to right click at core delay 5000 milliseconds. OK, and now we want another source visibility state to turn it off. Right. We're just going to duplicate this one. Right click, duplicate sub action, double click on it and set the state to hidden. So show, wait, hide. That's it. Now, no, that's not it because we have text. <laughs> we do have text. So alert text here is the only quote unquote complicated thing, but we're going to figure it out. So, so there's two sub actions in order to display the name of the person who followed. One is to get the information. Two is to just switch the text to that information. So I'm going to right click 
I'm gonna go to Twitch, I'm gonna go to user, and I'm gonna go to user info for target. So source type, whose information are we trying to get? The user. So whoever triggered whatever we're doing, we're gonna get the name. Okay, so add target info from who redeemed. Right click, now we can switch the text. OBS, it's a source, set text GDI. Now, what is the text that you want to change? It's the one that's in the scene called alert scene. The source is called alert text. Actually, I should call this follow text to make more sense. There we go. OBS source set text follow text. And if you read right there, it tells you, hey, you can use a variable, by the way. Target user is the variable that you need to get the name of the user. So that is percent target lowercase u uppercase and then user. <laughs> Boom. And that's just the name. If you wanted to have custom text like is now following, that's where you type it. But we just need the name for our aesthetic follow alert. Let's click OK. Nice. So both of those are at the bottom. I'm just going to bring them up. So add target. I want it to be the first thing that you gather, basically. And then I want it to immediately change the text before it becomes visible and then turn it on. Right. So what is the trigger? So right click under triggers, Twitch, channel, follow. And that's it you will have a working follow alert. All you have to do is basically go to the scenes where you want the alerts to show up, add a new source as a scene, and then pick your alert scene like this. Guess what? It's in there. It's in there. <laughs> so your alert will appear where it appears. Um, let's go to StreamerBot and see if we can test it. Right click, test trigger. And that was an actual name of an actual follower. <laughs> Saving Serenity. Thank you for the follow, by the way. <laughs> and it's that simple. Now, if I want to add like sounds or anything like that, and there's multiple ways of doing it. In StreamerBot, they already have a function to play a sound. You can right click, go to core, go to sounds, and then click play sounds. So then you can put like a sound file wherever you want in that process. Now you might be thinking, oh no, I have to do this for every alert. No, you don't. You can just right click, duplicate this one. Let's rename it by double clicking. And this was, what did we say for this, the other one? Uh, resub, click okay. And we're just gonna change a couple of things. Turn off the follow alert. That's the one we want, right? Target info, we still want that. We still want the text to say the name of the person. Now OBS visibility state, we actually want to change that to resub. That's the group we want to set visible. Same thing here. Nice. The only thing we need here is to change the text. So we're going to duplicate the, the text that we're already changing. Right click, duplicate sub action, double click, and then select the, the right text. What did we call it? Alert message. So source alert message. And in this case, target user is not what we want. We want a raw input. I believe it's called not a raw input. <laughs> input and that is basically what they will type with their alert and click OK. Just make sure that it's placed somewhere reasonable like before turning it on. And then we have the source that is no longer for a follow. That is for something else. We can delete this trigger. Yes. Add a new one. It'll be a Twitch subscription resubscription. And look, you can even set different alerts for different tiers and different sub streaks. Click OK. And there it is. Hopefully the last person that subbed to me had like a message. Now we can turn this off, even directly go on our scene. And this should be ready to test. Test trigger. This is test subscription. OK, so there was there was no, but it works. But it works. Now, another huge advantage of using StreamerBot for your alerts is that you have access to more services, more alerts for more stuff. If I go to integration, for example, you'll see that I have integrations with uh, voice mod. For example, I have integration with Pulsoid. That's like heart rate monitor widgets. There's treat stream. There's Lumia stream. There's VTube studio. There's crowd control. There's Elgato stuff. That also means that you can create alerts that are triggerable <laughs> that you can trigger with channel points for that. You will need platforms. We go to Twitch and we have channel points. You can even have alerts for polls. For example, you have predictions, pyramids, sub counters. There are so many options. There are so many, even if you just go to trigger, you can see everything that can trigger an alert commands. Of course, hotkeys for you. For example, there's a quote system. If someone adds a quote, you can have an alert for that. So we have the crowd control stuff, effect failure, effect request, effect success. When OBS disconnects, for example, maybe you want it to play a sound so you can know what's going on. But even for hype trains, uh, guest star stuff, community goal alerts, you can have specific actions happen when you're starting a raid. Specific things happen when you run an ad. The possibilities are just endless. Now, the question it probably is instead of using like static panels for Twitch, 
what if you wanted some animated backgrounds? You can totally find some. Some of my animated overlays over at gumroad.com slash get level come with alerts. Make sure that you read the description. But uh, should I make like a small pack, maybe five animated backgrounds specifically for alerts so that you can create your own alerts depending on the style that you want? I think I might do that. <laughs> Anyway, so that was a quick overview on how I would go about creating alerts using StreamerBot and OBS. If you've been watching my channel, you know that there's a whole lot of like effects that we can add to make even static images more animated. And you have a clear idea of how creative you can get with OBS Studio anyways. So let me know in the comments if you want me to make uh, more videos about more options. I know that Polypop, for example, is one thing that I would definitely recommend. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. Go out there, make me proud, get a level out.